Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Radiant Dawn. I'm your host, Gordon Captain. Today, we're going to be covering 1-7. In 1-7, we have a few things to do. One thing you may notice is I didn't have the info convos. That's just because they didn't record well. Uh, there is a really good conversation between Zyhark and Meg that for some reason I couldn't get recorded. And I think I'll be skipping info convos from now on. Um, so one item you might notice that I get is the Brave Sword. So the Brave Sword has 9 might and just attacks 4 times. Now, it's not actually very good to use it that much because you want to save it for the other armies, mostly with the Grail Mercs. But it'll be useful a few times. Zyhar can, for the most part, get away with just using the Killing Edge instead, since the extra critical rate almost makes up for that. <clears throat> and speaking of Zyhar, we gave him Paragon here. So Paragon is the main reason why Zyhar is actually a viable combat unit in Part 3. He has two maps, this map and 1-8, where he has essentially unrestricted access, well, uncontested access to Paragon. The only unit that would contest it is Jill, but let's say you're training Jill in a playthrough. Uh, Zyhar, like you could just leave Jill unpromoted in this map, and Jill does not have does not exist in one eight, so that's not a problem. We also gave Leonardo and Edward their B support. This is actually all I needed, as it turns out, and I don't know why. You don't actually need to get them to A. Um, with B support, Edward and Leonardo will sur Edward will survive a, a hit from an untransformed tiger while wielding Collad Bulk and being promoted, and s doubles and one rounds a tiger as long as he crits them. This isn't actually a very necessary thing and probably could have been skipped. So... The This map is a little bit weird as far as square counting goes. So it's best to think of this map as sort of having two different objectives rather than one major objective. The first objective is getting south to recruit Tormod. Tormod starts 16... Tormod, the square which you recruit Tormod is 16 squares away from so starting position. And so you need south to be shoved twice. Here I shove him with Edward and Leonardo. And now Soth is seven squares away from recruiting Tormod. <clears throat> Micaiah is placed in Jill's saddlebags, which means that Jill will be able to uh, keep up, keep up, and <clears throat> move Micaiah to Marim, who, on turn three, two and three, Marim actually Marim and Vika actually start significantly far ahead of the main army. Here's Yark is killing some guys up north. These don't actually matter at all, but the first two guys actually are aggressive enemies, so you would need to kill them somehow. But here, Volug is doing absolutely nothing and grinding uh, strike rank against these armor knights. In if you wanted to, instead of doing this with Volug, you could have Volug stay in the stay with the army here and move with uh, Tormod, which would make it a little bit more reliable to beat this map, but not really that so much. You may notice that we gave Tormod the uh, Thunder Tome. That's because the Thunder Tome has more hit than the Elfire Tome that Tormod has, and the same might, which means that he'll be much more likely to hit up ledge against this mage. If you bring Volug with you, uh, the... You can actually just n avoid having to hit the mage twice. You might even be able to do it without hitting the mage twice at all. It's actually just a very easy, clean map. Now, Ileana is going north here to bait some enemy from Zyhark on, around, on turn 3, so Zyhark can farm EXP easier. You can sort of ignore any of Ileana's existence. <clears throat> The movement we did with Vika and Marim, uh, by rescuing... Vika has the unique combination of Kanto and Shove, and since she starts transformed on this map, she's able to Kanto Tormod to a more favorable position. 
since Mordecai Morim is uh, has also a really good position, you can do that rescue chain, which allows you to get Tormod directly to the critical uh, square on the path to attack the mage. Vika, uh, Volag needs to grind strike rank again so he can get to S strike in 3-6. This is actually literally only necessary for one enemy, and I spent way too much time optimizing that. So you do need a, the mage to roll down on, I think, HP in order to kill that mage, or they can roll down on res if they roll up on HP, if I remember correctly. So it's not like every time you're going to kill that mage, but you should probably just kill that mage. Now it's time for sort of the the rescue chain to get through the map. So the first thing you want to do is you need to clear the path for Morim. But once the path is clear for Morim, you give Jill wants to give the Jill gives Micaiah to Morim, and since Morim is exactly is um, after after accounting for ledge terrain penalties. 10, uh, 15 squares away from the cease point, <clears throat> Marum can actually just drop Micaiah into position on this turn, and Mar uh, Micaiah can seize immediately. So the only other thing left to do is to farm EXP, which I do here by giving Zhark a wind edge. There are two mages which will die to Zhark's attack, and that's pretty decent EXP. If you had Zhark have a uh, Draco Shield and a Seraph Robe like you would normally, you could actually do more aggressive grinding than I do. But because I was limited by Zhark's bulk, I didn't do that. So this Armor Knight we just baited here uh, would normally go after Zhark, and that would be bad because Zhark's bulk isn't good enough. And so we just have Ileon sit there. There isn't any relevant combats that happen on this enemy phase. You are just watching player units grind EXP. None of the enemies on the right side move for some reason, and so you can actually just ignore them. Okay, so on the last turn of the game, of the map, uh, we need to do one side objective, which is get breaking as many of these doors as possible to get bonus experience. <clears throat> the one important thing about this is I wanted to use the two use hand axe there with Jill so that I could get a one use hand axe. I needed a one use hand axe and an 18 use hand axe for Teronio strats in an upcoming in three in three twelve and this was the most convenient way to get those. From here the only thing left to do is to um, move your units forward. If somehow you could have shoved south like another time in uh, this map you would have been able to break the door that Tormod's adjacent to, and Tormod could have changed movement paths, but obviously I didn't have that, so I didn't do it. <sighs> Tormod breaks a door, and obviously I miss out on one door break, but it doesn't really matter. Bonus experience isn't actually that important. And Vika gets the Master Seal. Um, I didn't need this Master Seal. It was just really nice that I got lucky. A few other attempts, I actually didn't get the Master Seal at all, but, you know, Master Seals don't matter. Ileana and Zyhark will combine to kill this Armor Knight. The reason you want to combine to kill this Armor Knight with Ileana and Zyhark is because, well, Zyhark just doesn't want to die, so you need to get uh, the Armor Knight dead. Ileana missed, unfortunately, so I had to rely on a lucky cancel or critical or something, and I just went with Killing Edge for that. Backup strats don't always have to be the most reliable. And so from there, we just one round the boss with Morum and Seize in four turns, and we'll see you next time for 1-8. Bye-bye.